Hello and welcome back to Wagner's Tech Talk. Today we've got something really fun. <laughs> We're going to run the Amiga or UAE for All emulator on the RG350. This will allow you to do all kinds of things including playing some of the retro games that you may recall from years ago such as Lemmings. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you want to do is go ahead and go to the wagnerstechtalk.com webpage. So we'll just type in wagnerstechtalk.com, go to tutorials, and scroll down below and you'll see RG350 tips. So we'll go ahead and click here. And this will take you to the RG350 tips page, which there's a bunch of information here for you. So you definitely want to spend a little time here and take a look around. There's helpful accessories, resources, just a lot of information and it's constantly changing. <laughs> for example, I just recently added a section for backing up and restoring your game saves, which will be very handy if you're upgrading to a new firmware revision. I also had a viewer that needed some more information on how to set the clock on the RG350 and how it works with the games, and so I added this section. Feel free to check it out. All right, now let's move on to what you're here for, and that's the Amiga emulator, or UAE for all. This gives you just a little bit of background about how I got started with it. First, let's go ahead and pop out the micro SD card, and we'll go ahead and, and install that into the sleeve and put that into our computer. Next, we'll go down to the instructions here where it says to pull up the UAE for all OPK. So we're going to go here and download the UAE for all. Right click, go to save link as, and we're just going to save it to that micro SD card that we just popped in. Before we do that, let's go ahead and create a folder. So we'll create an emulators folder. And within that folder, we'll create another folder called Amiga. And then we'll go ahead and save the file into that folder. And next, we need to find the kickstart ROM in the workbench.adf file. Now, I chose to use the Amiga Forever distribution, which included these files. It's totally up to you how you wish to do it, but I prefer to support the retro computing community if given the chance. It's pretty cool in that it lets you run the Amiga right on your PC. Okay, so anyway, after installing it, this is where the Kickstart ROMs get copied. So we'll just copy and paste that and grab this guy here, the Kick33180.A500. And we will paste it into our Amiga subfolder. And we'll do the same thing with the workbench. So I'm just going to copy and paste that path. And we'll grab the, eh, we'll go ahead and grab the extras and the workbench. Select those, right click and copy. And then we'll paste them into our Amiga subfolder. So now we have pretty much all the files that we're going to need to get the Amiga to boot. However, there's this one step here. That is, we need to rename the kickstart to kick.rom. So we'll rename this file and click rename and we'll call it kick.rom. Delete the rest here. And now we're ready to move over to the RG350. Don't forget, there's this free retro computing stand. Link in the description below. We'll go ahead and pop that micro SD card back into the RG350. And we'll power on the unit. All right. 
Let's see if we can get this Amiga working. First thing you want to do is go to Dingix Commander. And on the left hand side over here, what we want to do is browse up to the media subfolder. So go to media, data, and then apps. And this is where the OPKs are installed. Now we'll move to the right. So now we're on the right hand side. Hit B to go back and we'll go to media. And we'll go to RG350, emulators, Amiga. And we want to copy the UAE for all.opk. So we're going to press X and then press A to copy it. And then press Y and then A to quit. And we're going to press the right bumper and go over to our emulators tab and launch UAE for all. Now the reason we're doing this is so it'll create the subfolder that we need. Initially you're going to get this. Kick.rom was not found. So now we're going to hit select and exit. And then we're going to go back over to applications. Go back into Dingix Commander. And if you scroll all the way down here, you'll see UAE for all. Actually, dot UAE for all. So we're going to go there. And then on the right hand side, we're going to go back up to media. And we're going to go back to our micro SD card. So we'll go to the RG350 in my case, go to Amiga. And then we will press X and then A on copy. And now we should be able to boot up. So we're going to go ahead and press Y and then A to quit. And we'll go back over to the emulators. Go back to UAE for all. And we shouldn't get that message anymore. And we didn't. That's great. All right, so let's go ahead and load a disk image. So we're going to press A. And go ahead and select an image. So we'll press A. And we'll go to our RG350 folder. And then we'll go down to our emulators, Amiga. And we're going to load up the workbench. Now on the frame skip, set that to auto. I believe by default it was zero. So you want to change that, and I think all the others were fine by default. Okay, now for the moment of truth. We'll click the Start Amiga button. Aha! It looks like everything's going well so far. The Amiga Workbench disk is booting. If you're enjoying this video, please click the Like button below. It motivates me to keep making more videos as well as keeping the tips up to date with new information so I appreciate it. Notice when you first go in here the mouse doesn't work until you hit the left bumper button and you'll see an icon in the lower left for a mouse and of course now your mouse can move. To change the speed just hit the right bumper button and you can increase or decrease the speed by toggling through all the mouse speeds. This is pretty handy, good information to know, and not exactly obvious. Okay, so let's go ahead and open the workbench. We're going to double tap the X button. And we'll open up, oh, let's say, system. Sounds good. Double tap. And there's a bunch of utilities there in the Amiga. Disk copy format. All right, let's go on to utilities. And here's some interesting stuff. Ooh, yeah, I remember that. Let's, hey. let's go ahead and double click it. And if I remember right, if I type in something here, it should say it. So let's do that. So I'm going to tap the left button and then the right to bring up the virtual keyboard and type in some text. And then when you press enter or return, it should say it. Hello, Wagner's Tech Talk fans. <laughs> now that's cool. All right, so now that we have our Amiga working, let's try some games. How about that? Let's go to load disk image. 
And we're going to go up a couple of levels here and go to our Amiga ROMs. We're going to try Arkanoid. And I'm going to hit Reset. And you want to hit F1 on the virtual keyboard to start the game. I'm going to turn the light out here so you can see it better. And we'll launch the ball with X. I did notice some minor issues with this game. There was a, a hissing sound in the background, which you can kind of hear at this point, but sometimes it's more prominent than others. But the game played fine, so I wanted to keep it in this video and let you know my experience there. We're going to move on to this level. It's pretty cool being able to play my old Amiga on this RG350. That's crazy. Very cool. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and load up another image here. So we'll click A, then we'll go up to Alien Breed. I'm going to select the second disc. And now it's asking for disc 2, so we're going to hit select. And we'll go back in here and select disc 2. And load. Alien Breed. This is a fun game. I haven't played this in eons. <laughs> So basically in this game, you go around shooting aliens, collecting keys and health and all kinds of objects. Now we're going on to the next level, so we're going down an elevator. And moving on to the second level. Just want to show you a little bit of gameplay here so you get an idea of how well it plays on the RG350, which it plays pretty darn good to me. I mean, uh, it's been a while since I've seen it. Maybe you're seeing something that I'm not, but it plays well. <laughs> All right, who can forget this game? Extremely popular in the late 80s, early 90s. This was one of my favorite games on the Amiga. And of course, it was released for many other platforms. And in case you've forgotten the name of it, well, it's none other than Lemmings. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the gameplay. On this level, we need to do some digging. So we'll take the little cursor and put it over one of the characters. Press the X button and let him start digging. And the objective is to go ahead and get all of these little lemmings, which are basically brainless little fellows that need guidance to get to their destination. So there we go. Last little lemming. Go on in there, dude. All right. Yeah, we'll check out one more level. And on this one, I think we need a pick. And he's going to dig here somewhere. I think he's a miner. I think that's what they call it. So let's get this guy digging or mining. <laughs> now once he digs out, we need to 
set all these guys to be able to climb. So we'll go over here and we'll need to get them to climb up into the little exit point there. Forget what you call it. So I'm just going to press the button here on each of these characters as they pass. And there they go climbing. Cool. And one more. All right, cool. Now, one other thing I want to show you is a few accessories I've been experimenting with. This magnetic charger is pretty handy. It makes it quick and easy to plug and unplug the charger. And also this folding keyboard, which has found new use with the Amiga emulator, actually. Uh, the trackpad works really good. And one thing to keep in mind, though, if you upgrade the firmware, it may or may not work because I've seen some of the latest firmware do not include the USB drivers or they're not installed properly. So just so you know, this is the stock firmware. All right, so now we're going to open up the notepad and I'm going to show you how you can type stuff in. The only issue I have is that the space and the inner key aren't working, which are kind of big issues, so you have to use the virtual keyboard for that. Now let's check out the save states. I'm going to go into the save state zero and save the current state. And then I'm going to exit the emulator and come back in. I loaded up workbench prior to this and then go to save state, go to zero and load state. And there you go. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video very informative, and I hope you enjoy the 3D printed gaming stand if you choose to print that out. If you want to let me know you enjoyed the video, please click the like button. And if you want to see more from Wagner's Tech Talk, please click the subscribe. And with that, we shall see you very soon.